Hey everyone, I'm just doing a little bit of uh, final work on the station here. Uh, I've just got on all the decals. Um, they were okay. Uh, it would have been a lot better if uh, I've just got the station upside down at the moment. Um, I'll explain that in a second. Uh, it would have been a lot better actually if there was uh, quite a bit more glue on the uh, on the decals themselves. Uh, I had quite a bit of trouble getting them to stay down. Um, and uh, decal in particular, which I had the most trouble with, um, uh, were the ones that go along the central core around here. Now, you can see all these crazy steps here. Um, uh, you know, there's a separate decal which runs along the bottom perimeter here, but the, the, the lights which are on these steps here are actually just what, uh, three solid decals which go uh, down across all the steps and they're just horrible. I put them down and as I said there's not much glue on the parts uh, anyway. So I had a lot of trouble with trying to get them uh, to stay down and I could have I could have used this stuff, uh, the Microsol, uh, to... to uh, get them to cling down a little more, but if I did that, the orientation of them would probably have gone off and it would have been even harder to clear them off. So, I just chipped them all off and what I did was I ended up getting some acrylic paint and uh, like just a pin here and actually just going in and getting a good solid uh, bead on the end and I went in and I just, uh, just on these steps here, just on these steps, uh, dabbed in the the uh, the windows uh, just to match the rest of the model and uh, you know when you get up close they don't look as solid as the decals do but you know when you're about this far I guess they look okay um, and basically it's on the bottom anyway so um, I mean I don't like using that cop out explanation but uh, it is what it is uh, I didn't actually have time when I built this, I mean, and, and I'm, I apologize for not having any video on the build process of this at all, but I didn't have time. I really, I had to get the thing built. I had three, just over three weeks to put the model together and to paint it and do all that stuff. And this model was the hardest one I built to date. <laughs> had to be, didn't it? Because um, if you haven't seen my, uh, my unboxing video I did on this kit, um, I explain that... Uh, uh, for my birthday, my uh, girlfriend got me, uh, well, got me tickets to go up to a convention, about four or five hours drive from here, and uh, Armin Shimmerman, who plays Quark on this on this show on Deep Space Nine, was going to be there, and I thought, wouldn't it be awesome if I went up there, and got uh, a model from the show signed? So I, I got a hold of this model, and uh, we went up. I had three weeks to build the model and I got it all signed. What I'm going to do now is uh, do one last coating with this stuff just to make sure the decals are all uh, all set and done and then I'll flip the mo model over and uh, I may as well do a, f a completed video on it now uh, because all it needs is uh, uh, you know a coat of clear and it's all finished. So uh, stick around. So yeah, it was painted with a uh, custom mix of uh, Tamiya paints. Don't ask me what colours I used. It's kind of a a, a grey blue. I was either going to go with the grey blue look or the more mustardy tan colour. Uh, basically, I wanted my station to look a little bit more like the publicity photos for the show, which definitely had a, a slight more blue shift to it. Uh, one, of, one of my good friends actually, uh, when he saw the model, he was like, oh, it's, it's painted in Federation colours. <laughs> you know, so he gave me a bit of grief for that. But uh, no, I, re I really like it, and uh, he, he really liked it too. It's just being, it's just having a joke. And, uh, you know, actually he saw it before it was weathered, so it looked even uh, more ridiculous. Uh, and what I did for weathering was what I did for all my weathering, is I use... Uh, uh, Tamiya Dark Iron, you know, to get these uh, kind of rusty, dirty streaks where uh, ships dock and 
and all the rest of it and those lines you see are just with masking tape and a pencil uh, the actual filming model had that detail as well and I you know I carried it on through the all the docking pylons <laughs> as part of the reason this model took so long to make was because you had to repeat the process three to six times and uh, did the whole thing across the you know the outer docking arm I uh, filled as many seams as I could um, honestly uh, for a lot of it I ran out of time uh, those seams are supposed to be there even though they don't look that pretty uh, I had planned to fill these seams in here and in fact I did on every single lower pylon but again I ran out of time and I couldn't do that uh, regrettable but I don't think anybody really noticed uh, at the convention specifically uh, yeah, more of those lines there. Really like how it came out. These detail parts are cool. And always a fan of that dark iron as a weathering colour. Spiffy. Cool signature. Uh, decals. Now, these decals in here weren't actually labelled on the instructions, I actually had to, I, pre I was pretty sure I knew which decals they were but just to be safe uh, when I was doing decals I left those right to the end because obviously the, the decals that were left behind were the ones that went there um, aside from that, that's okay those missing spies do bother me um, but I, I will be replacing them um, they fell off in transit, that was the only damage to the model um, so so if you if you if you think this model looks shit because those spires aren't there, trust me, they're they're gonna be there. They're gonna be there. Um, uh, on the final day, actually, I, uh, these are uh, tan. The the highlight colors. These are the, to me a tan color, and these red ones actually were painted the the day I left. I mean, this is how this is how light and the uh, like how long it took to, to make this model. I was literally airbrushing the morning we left which was a big part of the reason why I didn't have these window decals on when I went to the convention. Um, and I didn't even have the colour that morning as well so I, I actually in addition to painting them the morning we left I had to go out to the hobby store and hope to God that they had the colour I needed. Uh, luckily, they, luckily they did it so it's a rust colour. Um, so yeah, that was interesting, very stressful. I mean, talk about doing something for pleasure and fun. It was extremely stressful to get this model done, but worth it because now I get to look at it and it looks like that all the time. I'll throw some more light on there. It looks like that all the time. Fantastic. Uh, I actually put off buying the Deep Space Nine model for a long time because I thought it was really inaccurate uh, shape and form wise uh, but it wasn't actually until I saw my uh, uh, good YouTube buddy uh, uh, models by Will, uh, he, he had his, he's doing a fantastic lip build up which is far better than this in almost every way and uh, the forms on it, just, you know, the overall shape, you know, these these sort of shots we saw in the show, it looked really good, it looked perfect, so I, uh, that was one of the reasons, uh, my friend Will was definitely one of the reasons I decided to go for this model, uh, to go up to the convention with and not something else like the Defiant, which I'm currently building, uh, there'll be a video on that shortly, so yeah, really cool, really happy with it, uh, I did actually assemble it incorrectly and because of that I now have have some problems which I have to sort out somehow uh, after I get the clear code and stuff on um, you're supposed to assemble the ring first and then put the pylons on I actually put uh, assembled the rings and pie sections and put the pylons on uh, so they basically ended up being uh, three sub assemblies with like everything on at once and because of that I've got some weird angles here and there which are you know easily fixed so I just need to secure them properly to the to the base to, to even everything out and uh, also maybe put a little bit more glue in these joints because uh, this model honestly it sucks it doesn't fit together well at all uh, and of course working with the ABS clear plastic made gluing even more difficult uh, 
don't know how well you can see there, nice shot of the bottom. Uh, I don't want to lift the model over at the moment because I just put some uh, some micro set microsol microsol on there uh, just to finalize all the decals. Uh, I actually considered for a long I wasn't bothered that I didn't have the decals on. Uh, for when I went up, because uh, looking at the box art, they photoshopped the, the uh, windows to look washed out, and I didn't think it looked good, so I had no idea of what the actual decals looked like on the model. Uh, but now that they're on there, I, I really... That bloody light off. I really, really like them. So yeah, this is the completed model of the Deep Space Nine station. Uh, which was a gift uh, for my birthday and uh, not only that but I got to take it up to a local science fiction convention about four hours, five hours drive away uh, back in March and uh, I heard that Armin Shimmerman was going to be there who played Quark on Deep Space Nine, he's one of the, the crowning jewels of that show truly um, uh, so I thought instead of taking like an action figure or getting like an autographed picture which would have been really really cool um, I could build a model like this and take it up uh, something I'd never ever done before and uh, yeah it was just it was great fun obviously you can see here uh, he's autographed it get some light on there he's autographed it there uh, it was just oh, it was just a fantastic experience it really was um, really really nerve-wracking getting the model up there uh, as I say, it's about f five hours drive. Uh, I had to clip the model together. Um, so yeah, we we get up there and uh, the model was fine. Uh, you know, only a couple of spires uh, broke off the the module, and that was it. Uh, luckily, nothing too drastic happened. Um, so we get up there. It's it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, he, I haven't been to a convention before, so it was um, it was really amazing. Uh, we lined up outside the center, and I, I was holding this uh, with with the base in front of me the whole time, and really, really uh, anxious and, and scared that somebody might walk into it and break. Because a lot of people there, there was hundreds and hundreds of people, um, probably more than that. Um, and uh, a lot of people seemed really interested in it. Uh, a lot of people were staring at it, and uh, you know. Because I, I guess people are used to seeing replicas and things that, that come in boxes more close, closely related to toys and because of that they have a different look about them. Uh, so, uh, you know, having people uh, actually stop me while I was walking through the convention with this in hand, asking for photos and, and that kind of thing was really, really nice. Uh, I didn't expect that at all. Uh, it, was, it was really, really good. Um, and I actually happened across, uh, my girlfriend and I, uh, pretty early on, uh, found a, a Games Workshop modeling booth, and there was a bunch of guys in there to, with amazing, amazing looking miniatures. Um, this is a bit wonky still, I haven't quite glued that down yet. Uh, but yeah, they had a, a, these amazing miniatures, and they were of course really interested in the model, and uh, I was getting quite a few warnings from people that it was going to get really, really packed. So uh, naturally I was getting even more worried and more anxious that somebody might bump into it. Uh, and the guys at the Games Workshop modeling booth offered to hold it there at, at the booth. Uh, and uh, I also had business cards and they were like, look man, just um, we'll, we'll hold it for you and uh, you know, have a look around the convention, have some fun and uh, come back and visit us every now and then and that's exactly what we did and uh, I, I came back and they said that a lot of people were really interested in it, I got a few business cards handed out which was really cool because you know I love building these things for, for people and customers and things always a great lot of fun um, so what happened, uh, I picked the model up from the booth and went to go uh, meet Armin Shimmerman who was like about to make his entrance and uh, so we got in line. I was about second in line. I wanted to get it done early. Uh, just I just didn't 
didn't want the model to break or anything like that. Uh, and uh, uh, Kitty Swink, Armin's wife, came out first, and uh, was have, have seemed quite interested in the in the model. Uh, she was just just staring at it from afar, very politely. And uh, then Armin came out, and before he even sat down at the. Uh, uh, you know, at his at his autograph table, he uh, he complimented the model. He said, "You know, it's a nice model." In his voice, I, I can't do his voice. Uh, so that was that was really really cool. Um, that was really nice. Um, so I finally walked up and uh, met him and uh, Kitty Swink, who was also signing autographs. She appeared on Deep Space Nine a couple of times. Uh, uh, sort of. Uh, shuffled over and uh, was talking to both myself and my girlfriend about the model and stuff. And, uh, one of the first things Armin did after I met him and shook his hand and everything was, he actually got out his pen and he was like, and it, so my bar was, was here, and I was like, actually it's it's these these windows down here, and uh, we started talking about the promenade set, and. Uh, you know, just uh, he seemed amazed that I'd never been to a Trek convention before, and I just said I was I had a great time meeting him, and that he was the first actor associated with Star Trek that I'd ever met, and that surprised him as well. And um, <laughs> I, I carefully lifted the model off uh, the base for him to sign it, and praying to the gods that it didn't break then and there, uh, and it didn't, and he signed it, and. Uh, I left and it was absolutely fantastic. It was the the best experience ever. And of course, I walked back to the booth. They knew exactly why I had the model, so they asked me exactly how it went, and and they're, they're all quite excited for me. And I left the model there, just as is, as it is now at the modeling booth for the rest of the day, while we went and you know walked around the uh, uh, all the uh, other stands, and I met Carl Urban as well. Uh, after that, it was just all around a terrific experience. I'm really, really glad I busted my butt over those weeks to, to do it. Uh, yeah, quite a lot of fun and I, I look at it fondly all the time, and, you know, knowing that it's all graphed and... But yeah, so that's the story. Thank you very much for watching everyone. I'm, I'm pretty sure I've, I've bored you enough with all this rubbish. Um, I can't really think of anything else to say, uh, other than I'm really happy with how it turned out. And I can't believe I met Armin Shimmerman, who was honestly uh, one of my favourite parts of that show. Uh, my partner Kim loved meeting him too, uh, she, th she thought he was just, he honestly, I haven't actually said this, but he was the nicest, one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life. He. I mean, I said it uh, straight after I met him to everybody that that guy deserves fame because, uh, I mean, he treats everybody with absolute, complete respect and he, he listened intently to everything I had to say. Um, and uh, that was, I mean, that was really nice. Uh, uh, Carl Urban was a little bit different. I mean, he was a different end of the thing. I mean... I, I kind of understand as well that, you know, you're stuck in a convention center all day meeting faceless people, you know, minute after minute. But, um, uh, Armin was just a complete delight. And, uh, honestly, that was the... I walked in there with that impression of him anyway because I, I've seen quite a few interviews with him and, uh, he seemed that way and that's exactly how he is. He was just really, really nice. Um, really stoked to have met him. So yeah, um, thanks everybody so much for watching, uh, especially if you're still watching um, now, like this video's gone on forever. Uh, stay tuned for uh, following videos, I, uh, I'm now going through uh, my Defiant build, which is really close to paint stage already, it's got lights on it and everything. I'll be uploading that soon, or maybe, maybe it'll be up there already by the time this is, who knows. Um, Thanks again, and uh, as uh, Lou Delmaso likes to say, uh, go outside, but if it's too hot or too cruddy outside, come back inside and just build a model.